Hi everybody, I'm Katina McHenry, Communications Director here at the Macomb School of Business, and you are joining us today on our Big Ideas Show, where we delve deeper into faculty research happening here on campus. Joining me today are two very esteemed guests, John Sibley Butler, who is a J. Marion West Chair in our Management Department, and Rajiv Gar, who is in our IMROM Department. And together they have co-authored a new paper that focuses on the tech startup community, which is fantastic here in Austin, and really looking at why startups locate in the regions and the areas that they do. So thank you both for joining us today. Happy to be here. Thank yes. you. Yes. So I'll start with you, Rajiv. Where did the motivation come for wanting to look into this topic and um, and research? So the the motivation started with uh, I mean a lot of uh, the tech. Uh, entrepreneurship activity that was happening in Austin. I mean, we started this about three to four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the boom of the South by Southwest, like all these uh, other entrepreneurs like yourself moving back into Austin and uh, other places as well. So the, the cost uh, of living in San Francisco was getting higher or New York City was getting higher. So the point was like, what is it that entrepreneurs need when they move to a location? Or can we predict which cities are gonna become the next entrepreneurial hub mm -hmm. in, the, in the country? And, and that's where we started. We started uh, following a bunch of different entrepreneurs. We started collecting data and seeing where entrepreneurs are starting their firms uh, over these last uh, decade or so. Is this something you guys, We've known for the last sort of 10 years here in Austin, particularly when you talk about predicting, are these things that we've already known about the growth of the city and, and also its, its support network for entrepreneurs? Well, there's an extended, extended research on the relationship between region advantage and entrepreneurship. Well, we had done it from a theoretical point of view. Mm -hmm. That is, we had great stories, we had great qualitative research. What Rajiv and I set out to do was create a, st a statistical model an algorithm that will allow us to predict how regions really, really survive and, and ask a number of questions. When an entrepreneur is trying to find out where they're going to locate, what's important to them. So if you think about a model, we would have those variables that predict stuff, in our case, the location choices of, of the entrepreneur and what's important to them. Mm -hmm. for, for example, we know that funding, or we thought that the amount of money was very, very important to them. But it wasn't necessarily the amount of money per se, but it was the number of founding rounds per se. Rajiv, I thought that was an interesting uh, finding. You want to comment on that? <laughs> yeah. So actually, before I answer more, I want to ask you, you started a company in Austin. Why yes. did, what brought you to Austin? Well, I lived here previously, I, and I spent a short amount of time, uh, long enough, in Birmingham, Alabama. And I started the company there, but what I realized is that there was this element of just education that I really had to explain what the product was, and there also wasn't a really strong network for entrepreneurs as it, it was here in Austin. So one of the reasons I was excited about moving back is this: this there's a community here of entrepreneurs, startups, the tech industry, it's all already here, so I felt like I didn't have to work as hard with finding what I needed and finding um, the type of uh, support that support, I needed yeah, from yeah. an entrepreneurial Mr. standpoint. You, you answered the question you asked us yes. and I'm, I'm gonna assume you didn't read the paper <laughs> no. but that's exactly what we're saying right yes. so the tech startups or entrepreneurs these days they don't need a huge amount of money, mm -hmm. right? They need that support network. They need more funding rounds. Uh, students here, if you see at the, uh, the University of Texas, I mean, they're really smart, like really excited about the, the innovation sort of uh, ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? They're creating startups almost every day here. I mean, uh, creating, uh, going to Kickstarter, running a campaign for $10,000 or, or something. I mean, I have students in my class who created startups in Austin. All they need is some amount of seed money to create a product or service, build an app or so. I mean, most of these students or the, the people in the area are just developers. They can create something of their own, yeah. right? And that's what they need, an ecosystem where people can provide support, right? Uh, say, uh, tell, tell them like, hey, I'm going to give you $5,000, go for it. Like you're thinking in the right direction. Yeah. Or, uh, I mean, having just people around who can guide them on how to market, how to sell and something like that, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the American economy needs that innovation culture, that startup culture to, I mean, be great again, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, the so do, loud is, yeah. Yeah, there was a time when the location, not just location, but your address on whatever it is, your postcards or your website, like that yeah. was really important. And and I don't know if people had a perception of, depending on where you were in the country, what kind of company you were and it's the strength of your company. So where, where do you think the shift came for well, people the fact paying the situation less attention? Is, 
as 98% of all the great companies have been found in three regions, Austin, Silicon Valley, and 128 in Boston. Mm. So we can start with that data. But what, that, what, what the paper allows us to do is to, is to look at emerging tech regions. You know, as, as Rajiv said, you know, we don't need waterways anymore. We just need good ideas and we need funding. So, so if we look at the data and if we do a, um, a, know, a, um, a picture of where people are going, we know that they're going to Silicon Valley, we know that they're going to Austin, we know that they're going to, to 128 in Boston, but they're also going to Milwaukee. They're also leaving uh, New York City and coming to Austin. So the paper allows us, you know, in the original conceptualization, to look at many, many, many variables. So I think that the, um, I always like to tell my students, when you want to be a movie star, where do you go? You go to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You want to be a country western singer, where do you go? You go to Nashville. Nashville. Mm -hmm. You want to be an opera star, you go to New York. And the reason for that, there's a great, as you answered the question, between the ecosystem and how the ecosystem feeds the entrepreneur. Right. So if I'm in Nashville and I'm a country western singer and I need a drum player, the drum player is over here. Well, if I'm in Austin, I need somebody to write code. The coding person is right here. Right. So it's the, it's the impact of how the ecosystem interacts with the needs of the entrepreneur. Yeah. That's very interesting because my company, and I should have said it before, thank you for presenting the question. <laughs> um, I invented magnetic socks that stay together in the laundry so you never lose your socks. So if, I, one of the things I thought about was what, would people buy the product? Right? That's like the second question, the secondary question. But the first question was, can I do what I need to do? Can I find who I need to find? And that's been exactly the case. I have been able to find who I needed to find. That's true. <laughs> like, you know, just, just a phone call or an email um, away. And the networking um, has been a lot stronger. Like the collection of people that are here and who have an understanding of entrepreneurship and true, innovation true. are also true. here too. Well, let's remember that I tried to ne network you in Alabama. <laughs> Was, that, it didn't was, work. I flew, I flew to Birmingham, but there was no network. We tried to create that ecosystem, but just the way it right. is. So it therefore, if you look at our data, Birmingham does not come up, but that's okay. I think what I found interesting about the paper also is how different uh, regions are copying what we have done. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, the theoretical, historical theoretical paper, ideas of the paper, it is how regions prosper. Mm -hmm. And Austin is all over the literature, and, and people ask, what was done to create this miracle, you know, in less than 40 years of an awesome Texas that went from no opportunities to lots of opportunities? Yeah. So where do, where do you th guys think, based on your research, where do you think it started? What did it start with? Was there one particular company or was there one particular investor or was it a combination? Well, of course, that's right in my sweet spot. It started with George Kosmeski. It started with the IC Square Institute. And it started with Kay Hammond and, and, and evolutionary technologists. It started with Michael Dale doing well. It started with Jim Trussard and National Instruments. So, and if you look at what we call a cluster literature, then you, you find that high-tech companies tend to cluster. Mm -hmm. So it was started by the McCombs School of Business, a, a former dean, George Kosmeski, who created the Austin Technology Incubator through IC Square Institute and started the whole momentum to change mm -hmm. the nature and create this wonderful miracle where we live in today. Was that in the early 90s? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Early, actually, the late seventies. Okay. And, and it, we started rolling in, in the mid mid nineties. So now, what what is your prediction for just where the where Austin is going from a tech standpoint and a startup standpoint? What are we? So what should I we think, expect uh, besides more more, more yeah. traffic? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think what we saw is uh, Austin, San Diego, Atlanta are places to be. Mm -hmm. right now. I mean, these are the cities which are booming, which are attracting entrepreneurs from all over the world, not just Silicon Valley, New York, but also internationally. People want to come to these cities because they have more funding around. They have uh, opportunities for people to connect and sort of be part of some incubator uh, and, and network with the like-minded people, mm -hmm. right? So think about the network part. If uh, So this is another angle in the paper that we talk about is stickiness, right? If you're already in Austin, and you want to start a company, you're not going to leave Austin. Right. Not just because of Austin, but it's because the stickiness of your network. If you had a much larger network, so coming from Alabama to here, uh, you had a network there that was preventing you mm -hmm. to leave Alabama to come here. Mm -hmm. And that stickiness is there. But you make that choice, like, I'm going to go because now I have a stronger opportunity, a stronger network in Austin. I'm yeah. going to go and leave this network. But I'm like, if your network in Alabama was richer, you were connected with more people yeah. who, 
<laughs> you wouldn't have come here, right? Well, <laughs> I mean, there are more reasons, but <laughs> right, yeah. I think the stickiness is more adhesive yes, here yes. than yeah, it yeah. was there. I mean, I feel like in Birmingham it's coming, cool, and cool. you know, it's 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 bordered by Atlanta and also um, Huntsville and and Nashville. But I feel like the stickiness yeah, here is yeah, a lot yeah. stronger. I think there are more like-minded people, and the idea of innovation. Yeah. It is much more defined and developed here in Absolutely. Austin. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what we should predict in the future is that if you look at Silicon Valley, it's, it's more than one or two or three or four cities. Right. Uh, we, we know that San Marcos would do great things. As as the idea, as as Raji would say, the how can you live in Austin until so you go to San Marcos to start it? It might go all the way to San Antonio. So these, these regions are more than just one city. Silicon Valley is four or five cities. Right. So, you know, we can talk about the, uh, the Texas region that includes not only Austin, but also includes Round Rock, includes um, San Marcos, maybe even Columbus, Texas, uh -huh. My, you know, as, as far as Waco, Texas. Because now there are people buying houses, by the way, in Waco and coming to work in Austin. Right. So, right. you know, you, you think of a region as a regional advantage. And so it's, it's very exciting. Yeah. Based on the paper, what else is important to startups besides just the network, the stickiness of it? Is in investors? Is investors, that, yes. Yeah. So absolutely, uh, if any city can create policies to encourage investors to be in the city, right? Uh, maybe give some uh, the tax credits or something to invest in startups. I mean, that is going to boost the number of startups coming in or entrepreneurs coming in to create startups because startups are not looking for the million dollar these days. I mean, they're on an average looking for somewhere between fifty to hundred thousand dollars, and then that's uh, plenty of amount of money for most companies and most entrepreneurs to relocate and come to, say, Austin or Atlanta or any other city out there. So having more funding is important. So a VC firm could decide, like, rather than spending a million dollars on one company, if I'm going to feed 10 startups, right? I mean, they have to evaluate the ROI. I'm going to give one million to a company that's actually becoming successful. It's already on the path of right. success versus there are 10 companies which may uh, be on the path of success. Right mm -hmm. now, they don't know. But like it's going to attract even more people right. to the city as well. Right. So, but if their government is uh, allowing or giving some tax breaks, like the more more you invest, if a company is doing well, maybe we're going to uh, reduce the taxes that you're paying in state. Right. Sure. So that'll attract even more people to yeah. the city, and that's what happened with New York. So New York started giving more incentives to startup in terms of tax break, and more uh, startups started going back to New York, or people started staying in New York to start their companies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there. And, and in Austin, of course, we, we built it also on Angel Networks. So we have, we have organized the wealth. So we have the Central Texas Angel Net Network, the Baylor Angel Network, the, the Cowtown Angel Network, that's Fort, Fort Worth, the Houston Angel Network, and et cetera. And, and, and what's interesting, uh, Dale was Angel. That's just wealthy people. Now, Whole Foods was Angel. Uh, if you look at the National Instruments, it was Angel when it started. So what, uh, what, what, what we found out was that it's, it is the flow of money. You don't need $2 billion or $100 million to, mm -hmm. to literally start a company. So I think that's some of the excitement. And uh, when people look to start enterprises, then we, we have organized the wealth. So that wealthy individuals who have started companies, who have sold companies, they come back in the ecosystem and help fund mm -hmm. the companies also. Yeah, so there's this continuous cycle. Yeah. Yeah. One last question. So what is your best advice to startups, whether they're tech or not, what, based on the paper and the, based on your research, what is your best advice for them going forward? Well, you know, I was the first investor of Glowfish, which we was very successful and, and, and we sold. I think with any kind of advice to the entrepreneur, you must almost have your, you have your startup strategy. But the question will always be asked, you know, what do you plan to do with this company? Mm -hmm. Do you need to, do you want to sell it or do you want to scale it? So the advice is to get really, really get involved in the networks, to understand the importance of going to meetings. To go to, I mean, my, my Starbucks, I can hardly walk in Starbucks without having a class now. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to talk about that, that kind of activity. So to keep Austin viable, we must continue to stay on cutting edge science because I think all of the startups start with science. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft is a computer science company. Uh, Southwest Airlines is the science of flight. So going forward, uh, the region has to maintain good science and understand that we've got to continue to create entrepreneurs here and people will come here to be entrepreneurs. Yes. So um, I would say if, if you have a passion, go for it, mm -hmm. right? If you're passionate, you have an idea you want to pursue, go for it. Tap into your network, 
right? Contact, I'm going to talk to your friends, tell them I'm interested in this company. I'm going to, across the country. Don't think you have to talk to people here only, mm -hmm. right? Engage with them and say, look, I'm, I'm thinking about this. What do you think, right? And I'm pretty positive, like, you're going to find someone to support your idea to your vision, and you're going to be successful. Yes. I mean, this market, this environment is rich for innovation and entrepreneurship. Yes, awesome. Well, thank you guys both for joining us today. We really appreciate it. This has been very insightful, so thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If you'd like to read the full paper, it is called Social Networks, Funding, and Regional Advantages in Technology, Entrepreneurship, and Empirical Analysis. Thank you so much for joining us today on our Big Idea Show. We'll see you next time.